CMC. Broadcasting to you live from New Jersey, USA. So a good evening from me to you. If you're in my side of the world, it might be evening for you, but I know it's early in the morning for our friends in Europe, or uh, late at night, depending either way you want to think about it. So uh, much respect to anyone across Europe who's here at this time. That is excellent. Um, our man of the hour, Sean Bonville, is from the UK, but he is currently in Japan. So uh, it's 10 in the morning, I believe, in Japan. Hopefully we have some of our students, uh, some of our teacher students, that is, from Asia tuning in, since this is maybe a good time uh, for some of them. I'm here, as usual, just to get things warmed up, get the party started. I have a very special uh, uh, surprise, or I should say Sean Bonville has a very special surprise. I'll talk to you about him in a moment. But first, who do we have here since I haven't given any attention to our chat box? We have Abdul from Senegal. Hello, Nora in Colombia. Vanessa Calaquin Perez. Warm greetings from Brazil where it's summer. Very envious. I had to shovel snow today. I am not a winter guy. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if anyone likes shoveling snow, but um, yeah, it's like a winter wonderland outside, but it doesn't, it doesn't really do much for me. Who else is here? We've got, let me see, let me see. Gordana is here from Serbia. Nice chat with Gordana earlier today. Who else is here? Dr. Nelly's in the house. Dr. Nelly, by the way, is from Jupiter. Last time I checked, uh, she is uh, interplanetary. However, she's got, she sometimes, isn't that right, Dr. Jigsaw? <laughs> so I'll let you tell, she, she can be the one to tell you where, she, where she's from. I believe it's Jupiter. What other countries are represented here tonight by our illustrious English language teacher? Yes, yeah, she flies all over. More for, wow, we got a lot of Brazilians here tonight. That's exciting. Hello, Tanita. Wow, and Maria's here in Brazil. It is just, uh, I guess, you know, we got, got kind of lucky. It's 8 it's eight o'clock at night here, so, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in Brazil, right? So those, that's a good time, a good time to tune in. It's often in the middle of the night uh, or early in the morning for you guys when we do these things, right? So uh, let me tell you a little bit about Sean Bonville. Sean Bonville is a really incredible person ELT. I just wrote, he's one of our masters. And that is uh, not an overstatement at all. This guy, I think, has at last count 11 websites. And you know, some people have a lot of websites, whatever. This guy has websites that you have visited, whether you know it or not. It's one of, He's one of these guys that he's been in this so long, he could tell you about it. But if you're doing a search for like lesson plans or you know, communicative activities with students, you know, uh, you, more often than not, or maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but very often turn up on one of Sean Bonville's sites. Breaking News English is just one of those sites. He can tell you about the others. This is a man in English language teaching who has been dedicated to online uh, learning through very easy to use, free content websites that he's created and maintained. Uh, it's, it's really just quite astonishing uh, what this guy has done. I'm really excited to have him here. He has been, as I expected, uh, very communicative and engaging on his class page. I believe very strongly that with his history with content creation and how he uh, gets it out there, that doing online teaching, uh, especially at WizIQ and with us, uh, would be a great way to complement uh, what, what he already does. So he's done webinars and things, but um, he hasn't been doing online teaching uh, this way. Uh, so really happy to welcome him here. And I believe he's coming in in a moment. Let me say hello to a couple more people. You, yeah, Nelly, you remember when Sean started. Nelly's been in it and Nelly knows what's going on. Nelly knows what time it is, don't you Nelly? Even on Jupiter. And there he is, and what perfect timing. I love this new beaming in. There he is himself, the master, Sean Bonville. And uh, Sean, Nelly was just saying that uh, she remembers when you started. Now, Nelly's one of those people that's quickly turning into one of those, you know, I remember when I was, you know. But actually, it's very informative. <laughs> She's going to kill me for that, the old days. You said it, Dr. Nelly, not me. Uh, Sean, I, 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 
I just mentioned a couple of things about you, uh, just how uh, enamored I am with you for what you've done throughout your career uh, on all of these websites and how much I, I want to bring you into online learning and teaching teach complement that and you know this is just the beginning of my uh, strategy for that I want you to get started because you've got some great stuff to show them I'm going to disappear with video and audio but please just summon me back if you need me for anything okay <laughs> thank you and w one thing I didn't check is my sound okay and then we're going to check Sean can you hear How's me my sound? can everybody hear me am I coming through okay yeah, I'm okay. I didn't ask, but usually people will tell me if I'm not. How about Sean? Sean? Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes, Mr. B. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Don't mind Dr. Nelly with her uh, Jupiter comment. If she can hear you on Jupiter, then yeah, we're doing really well, though. Okay. Sean, just let me know if you need me. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Bonville. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Jace. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to say about that uh, wonderful welcome. Um, we get a lot of snow here, and I do like sn um, shoveling snow. It's good exercise. And Dr. Nelly, I remember um, emailing you about 10 years ago, so uh, at the very beginning of my site. Um, one thing that Jace didn't mention, I wanted to introduce myself um, using a little rap. Seems to be a, a common theme of uh, this MOOC. Uh, I'm not sure if I can get the, the hand movements going like Jace, but <laughs> I'll give it a try. Uh, so here we go. Um, hello, folks from all over the place. Hi to Sylvia, Nelly, and Jace. You may know my name, but just in case, this is Shawnee Sean from Cyberspace doing a class for WizIQ coming from Japan to talk to you. My class is called Listening to the News. I hope to hear your thoughts and views on how to teach using current events and how to motivate students. I look at why news is a must and show you my site, a site you can trust. There's discussion and spelling and dictation and online quizzes for education. There are easy to use activities in seven levels for you to use with ease. We'll look at news and many a thing like multi-level speed reading and spelling and writing and of course speaking, but the number one aim is listening. I'm so glad you came. You can say that you heard breaking news English with the word. <laughs> there you go. That was my first ever <laughs> rap. <laughs> and Jace, um, if you ever need somebody to do a duet with, I'm I'm here. <laughs> I had to come back in, man. That was that was excellent. Honestly, that was very cool on all levels. The <laughs> rhythm, the, the content. The, the ease that you did it with. Uh, if we have time, I have a favor to ask you. If we have time yeah. at the end, uh, yeah. could we do it one more time and I'll give you a little beat to go with it? Okay. Okay. I'll think about the hand movements between now and then. Okay. <laughs> Don't stress the hand movements, man. I'm just going to give you a little. Okay. okay? Well, that will be helpful. Time, yeah, that'll be good. If we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I, I want to have my debut with, the, with doing a beat on, on WizIQ. So. <laughs> You'd be helping me out. That was really good, man. I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm really glad that I, I get another chance because I forgot to put my hat on. <laughs> See? It was meant to be. At the end, if we had time, man, we're going to do a little thing together so I can put a beat behind you. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Excellent. Really nice. Okay. Um, well, thanks a lot, Jace. Uh, so my real name is uh, not Shawnee Sean. It's Sean Banville. Um, and as Jace said, I'm from breakingnewsenglish.com plus... Um, 10 other websites. Um, I'd also like to thank everybody for um, joining in with the, the comments in, in the, the, um, the chat over the last week or so. Um, it's been really good to talk about teaching using current events and hearing your ideas. I don't often get to um, talk about it to other teachers, so um, I'm very happy that um, I got a, a chance to do that. Okay. And uh, now I'm looking to see how I can move to the next slide. <laughs> ah, there you go. Right, so what we're going to do today, um, I'm going to give you some proof that news is um, great, it's important, it's an absolute um, must for um, teaching in the classroom. Um, let's see. 
I'll also look at why news is great for students. And teachers, um, I love using uh, current events in class. I find it very, very interesting to see how um, the students interact with it, the, um, what they have to say about it. Um, I actually love it, and I think if uh, the teacher loves what they're teaching, then that's a real plus um, for the students. We'll look at uh, problems students can have with listening to news. Um, I think all of the problems that students do have, I think, can be overcome. Um, we'll look at some solutions, some from me and some from um, the teachers who have written to me in the MOOC um, comments over the last week or so. Some really, really great uh, comments there. Um, we'll look at some um, ideas um, to use for listening to the news. Uh, this is where I get to show you around uh, my site, Breaking News English, so uh, please hang around, uh, stay for that. And uh, there'll be a wrap up, I'll give you some links and stuff. Uh, do you know how much coffee have you had? About four cups today, <laughs> which is a little, oh, good, Anna, which is a little more than usual. I've had four cups of coffee. Okay, but first, are you ready? If you have had a hot drink, I suggest that you uh, probably put it down right now. Okay. So, oh wow, good. So, <laughs> thank you, Adrian. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, got a few comments coming here. Um, so, what do you think? Is it true? Would you like it to be true? <laughs> um, it's a news headline, and that's uh, what initially gets our interest in the news. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, if you saw that for real in a newspaper or on the internet, you'd really, really, really want to, um, to read it or to listen to it. News is compulsive viewing, compulsive watching, compulsive listening. And um, that's true for us in our first language. Um, and it's true for students. The headline gives you a real, real, real purpose uh, for reading and for listening. Um, and of course, that's very important in the classroom. Once students have a purpose, then um, you've, got a, um, you've got them on your side. They're motivated, they want to listen, they want to know more um, about the story. And that, that will come at the very, very beginning of the class. So you're kind of onto a winner there. Um, unfortunately, and I'm very, very sorry to say, uh, this is not true. <laughs> I wish it was, but uh, we'll have to wait a few more years, I think, for uh, well, a few more decades or centuries for that to happen. Okay. Right. I've lost my slides. Okay. Um, news is the best classroom content. This is something I totally, totally believe in. It's motivating, it's educational, it's fun, it's interesting for the teacher and for the students. And it also lends itself to a huge variety of um, teaching activities from role plays to quizzes to research projects, uh, debates and interviews, and of course for um, language practice. Some of the greatest successes um, I, I've had in class is, uh, have been uh, with using news. I remember, remember just after my site started, um, I was teaching in Japan and I did a conversation lesson. It was in a conversation lesson and I took in uh, a lesson on um, gay penguins and the students absolutely loved it. Now, in this school, there was never any homework, but the student, uh, two particular students loved it so much that they uh, went home and they did the homework and uh, they did some homework on it, that was at the end of the lesson, and they brought it back. And um, I was amazed that they uh, liked the class so much. They were usually fairly quiet and not giving too much in the class, but they liked the content um, so much that they came back and did the homework. 
And that has happened again and again and again um, with my classes, that students really, really get into the content and want to know more about it and want to um, contribute more and give, um, give more and do more, study more. So um, that's, uh, what, that was one of the, the first times I realized that news was a, a very, very powerful thing in the classroom. Right, so a little bit more proof that news is very, very important. Um, if you look at this slide, you will see that uh, news is twice as important as love. It's four times more important than movies, and it's 100 times more important than um, vocabulary. This was from a, a Google search. I typed in some keywords, and these are the figures that I came up with. Um, one thing that I was surprised about, if you look at the, uh, the pink, um, the words in pink, is that people who play the saxophone, there's, a lots, of, there's lots of them and lots of searches for them. Um, also, uh, rap is up and coming, which I'm sure Jace and Stephen will be very happy about. Um, so, Jace and Stephen, pioneers for using rap in the classroom, it looks like it's um, maybe a thing to do in the future. So we get wrapping. Okay. Uh, next slide. Move on. Okay. Another. I, I found um, this quote quite powerful. It was sent to me by a teacher from LA, and she said, "Just wanted to let you know that I had a major success today." I get the low-level readers as well as ESL. One of my students is what one might politely call behaviorally challenged. Um, he actually completed the assignment on hip hop. This is the first assignment he has ever completed. I did not quite know how to react. Um, I think he, complete, uh, he completed it because he was motivated and um, interested in, in the content, in the news, um, which was about hip hop. And that totally reminded me of um, the lesson that I did on, on gay penguins, that um, students really, really uh, got into it. Like no other content that I had that um, taught up until um, that moment. So for this particular student and this teacher, uh, the news proved to be powerful enough um, for a behaviorally challenged student to want to engage more with the content and actually do some homework. Oops, uh, can I go back? Okay, um, another quote is that it is from um, Haas and Lochlin from 2000, uh, and I, I love this quote. Um, Current events provide authentic learning experiences for students at all grade levels. In studying current events, students are required to use a range of cognitive, effective, critical thinking, and um, research skills. I particularly like the, uh, the words in the kind of darker pink, all grade levels. A lot of teachers I've heard say that um, news is only for high level students, and it's not. If you grade the news and if you um, introduce the right activities, um, news can be introduced for um, kind of good elementary students, as I will uh, show you later. Um, Another thing I love about this quote is the fact that it's authentic. Um, quite often, or many, many times, you'll bring a news story into class, and it is authentic. It's the very, very first time that the students have heard that news, and they get excited about it. And once they're excited, of course, um, they're going to be a lot more motivated to learn or to study. Um, another it is proof that news is very important, is news is pretty much everything in life. Uh, what do I mean by that? I, um, the pre-class chat, I asked for some words associated with news and collocations. Um, I've put some of them here. <laughs> Jason, Colos, yes. Um, news is international, it's regional, it's local, <clears throat> it's world, national, it's good, bad, happy, 
there are, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of collocations that go with news. And it is pretty much everything in life. So you can bring anything into the classroom that is current and that will motivate um, and inspire students to, to, to read it, to listen to it, and to study um, using it. Um, I've put some words in purple, Lo local news. Um, news doesn't always, so, sorry, some students, some teachers I speak to um, get the impression that news has to be political or international. The news that has worked best for me um, is local news. Uh, I remember teaching in the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi a couple of years ago and students really were not interested in international news. They absolutely loved um, local news or, or news of their own, news about their own culture, Arab um, culture. And I made a lesson on um, a fight that broke out in a an abaya shop. And abaya is the, the, the black formal kind of dress that Arab women wear in the United Arab Emirates. And I put the, uh, the, the headline on the projector. And <laughs> once it came up, the students kind of went crazy. Everybody knew about the news. Um, some of the students knew the women involved in the fight. And it was absolutely fantastic, uh, a, a fantastic introduction to start the lesson that way. And they were just really, really into the lesson. And uh, it, it, it just worked so well because they had a kind of personal interest in it. It was local. Um, it was very, very new. It was news. Um, and it really, really kind of energized the class. Um, news can be about anything. So tap into it and um, find news about the students' hobbies. Um, celebrities, anything, Hollywood movies, da da da. Um, students will always, you'll always find something that students will like. One of the reasons that I actually I, I love teaching the news is that it quite often it doesn't seem like an English language class. It feels like I'm actually teaching a content class, real current events. Um, and I think the students feel that way too. Once they start using news in the classroom, um, they kind of forget that they're, they're studying grammar or listening or vocabulary, and they're actually teaching um, something. Sorry, they're actually learning something uh, real. One of the comments that uh, <laughs> I got from uh, last week was from a teacher who gave me uh, the phrase, no news is good news. Uh, which probably it would not be good news for me because if there was no news, then I'd probably be a, I'd probably be out of a job. Next slide: um, emotions and feelings. I did a little uh, brainstorming just by myself and came up with all these words that news kind of creates in us lots and lots uh, the full range of emotions. Um, okay, so news creates within us just every every possible emotion you can think of, and I think once students are emotionally involved, um, then they are motivationally involved. And Jace, there's a little idea there for a rap if you, if you want it. And um, so once they're motivationally involved then um, they're very willing to learn and you probably have a quite a successful class. News is everywhere in life, which is great um, for our students. Sources are everywhere. Um, Safar, Safar, I forget where you're from Safar, but you sent me uh, this little acronym um, last week, proving that news is everywhere. Um, news is North the way down there. So, north, east, west, south. I just clicked on all slides. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, so news is everywhere, and students have an amazing opportunity to listen or read news everywhere. Um, here are some of 
the places that students can read news or listen to news. Right. That was the fun part. Now we're going to get on to the more serious part, that uh, news um, is great for students. Um, as you can see there, that the Breaking News English University did a study, and this is what they found. Okay. Why is news good for students? Um, one reason is the relevance and authenticity. It's so relevant for their lives. It, it's all around us. So it's, um, if you bring in what's happening from the outside world into the classroom, it's relevant. Um, it's also very, very authentic. I've lost count of the number of times I've put on the projector and the headline. And the students will say, really? When? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. This, this cannot be true. And they immediately want um, to know more. And once you've got them at the beginning of the lesson, it really does um, help with um, uh, giving you a, a successful lesson. Um, so it's happening now. Um, and because it's real news, students uh, really like uh, learning using it. Oops, I've gone too far. Uh, magnitude and impact. News is incredibly powerful, whether it's on a local le level or an international level. Um, if you think about the very, very sad news last week of <clears throat> Nelson Mandela's passing and how that affected you, it's huge magnitude, huge impact. Um, massive kind of world news that students want to teach about. Yes, most, most people are addicted to news, and uh, students too. It's an important thing to remember that the students are as addicted to news, and it's important to them as it is important uh, to us. Uh, Dr. Nale, yes, when something happens, you cannot stop following it. Um, I'll talk later why that is actually good. Um, for teaching news into the classroom. Um, you, you can't stop following it, and that provides opportunities uh, for learning and classroom use. Um, so people, really, people and students uh, really, really want to talk about big world-changing events or things that affect their lives. Um, why am I going too fast here? OK. Informational and educational value. Um, we all, want, we all want to know what's going on, and students do too. If you can take that into the classroom and use that as a vehicle to teach um, language, then, then that's great. Um, tap into the student's desire for information, their, inf uh, their desire for news. Um, why is news good for our students? Schemata. Students. News is one of the, th the very few things, I think, mm, in teaching English that students bring a lot of background knowledge into, into the classroom with. And that really is a um, teacher's best friend. The students' prior knowledge um, of a news story, of the people involved in the news, the geography, the history, it's very, very useful um, to aid um, language learning and make them speak. Make um, it really, really provides um, a good prop for conversation, for speaking, and for them to use what they know. Um, it often transcends cultural boundaries, um, which can be an obstacle in the classroom. So for exa um, the example I gave earlier of Nelson Mandela, everybody in the world knows Nelson Mandela. There's no cultural boundary there, and they all want to know um, more about him. So new stories can actually help in easing students into skills activities um, and into language activities, uh, more so because it's probably, a lot of it is probably fresh in their, the student's mind from the, uh, the morning's news. Okay. Oops, it keeps on moving forward two slides. Right, this is an example of schemata from L1 of uh, background knowledge. And 
if I were to take a class from the website breakingnewsjapanese.com, which doesn't exist, so if anybody out there wants to start it, <laughs> uh, there's a good opportunity for you there. Um, it's I took it from a newspaper. It's native level, native speaker level, which is scary for me. I'm sure the same in English would be scary for students, which is why we need to uh, help them understand or um, what's going on in the news. But here, Schemata kind of comes to the rescue. There's a picture, so you know I can guess from the picture what's happening. I can get build up a build up some words in my mind. Um, the the word the the words that are coloured are all names and places. I know them, um, so that will help me with understanding. And it's the same with it's the same in English that uh, a lot of the words in the news, place names, people's names, or whatever, um, students already know. If you look at this slide, the names in yellow. Uh, so the words in yellow are the names of uh, names of people or places that are the same or similar in English, and that will be a big help. The words in green are numbers, so most students will have a pretty good grasp of numbers, and the the, um, the words highlighted in blue um, are basic vocabulary: South, Peace, Day, Japan, People, From. Now, this means that. I would say about 40% of this text I already know. So the schemata has helped me. Um, all I need is help from um, a teacher or from breakingnewsjapanese.com uh, to help me with the rest and perhaps to grade it to make it a little easier. So schemata is, a, as I said, um, a teacher's friend in um, allowing students to understand news more. Uh, next is continuity or chances for follow-up. News is continuing. This is this is a story I did um, on the 20th of November, and it's about the uh, a campaign to stop people using hands-free phones in cars. Now, the first few lines of the first few sentences of the news it says a major road safety campaign is underway in Britain to get hands-free mobile phones banned. Okay. If you follow this up the following week and recycle the vocabulary, recycle the ideas, um, their understanding, their schemata is always there, is, is already there, you just simply change it from the simple present campaign is underway um, to the simple past. So that's uh, one, one idea um, of using continuity. Um, the charity break is also calling for motorists, of course, a week later that would change to the past. Oops. Next is the um, emotional and intellectual interest um, in news, which really helps students um, want to study. So I've already talked about being emotionally involved, and that leads to being motivationally involved. Uh, put your hand up if you think Talking about news makes you feel intelligent, knowledgeable, and clever. Okay, 3,211 people put their hand up. That's a lot. Yes. Uh, oh, including me. So students actually, including myself in Japanese, we kind of feel um, good, um, clever about talking about news, and that will make them study more. Okay. Um, news encourages conversation. Oops. Um, of course, news encourages conversation. Uh, we all talk about it a lot. Uh, we talk about it every day. We start our um, conversation starters with things like, what's news? Have you heard? Uh, tell me it isn't true. So tell me about you and did you watch the news this morning? Um, and that's a good thing 
uh, for students in class um, to do, perhaps at the beginning of the class. And next is something I call the prestige barometer. Students like to be able to follow bits or all of the news. I think we all do in a, in a, a different language. And quite often we relate our, or we equate our own ability in, in a different language to how much of the news we understand. It kind of becomes a prestige barometer. Um, if someone says, how good are you in English or Spanish or French? Um, quite often the answer will be, well, I can understand um, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of the news. Um, another barometer for me is how much of the conversations between my wife and my mother-in-law um, I understand. <laughs> and that can be uh, pretty important too. So news makes, news can really make students feel good. It makes them feel successful um, if they understand um, you know, half, more than half, or most of it. And that's our mother-in-law's interesting thing. And, um, so that's one of our jobs, is to actually make them feel good about what they're learning and make them feel they're successful in learning. And finally, critical thinking. So news is great for our students. And um, because of the opportunities it gives for critical thinking and problem solving, in a classroom, you can ask the students to sol solve all of the world's problems. Um, the, the little example I showed you earlier, hundred, hundreds of different examples of how you could um, get students into problem solving or critical thinking about how to stop people using mobile phones in cars. Um, you can do role plays, you can write, to the, write letters to the president of the USA, um, you can do anything to help with students' critical thinking and um, problem solving in class. News is absolutely fantastic for that. So now we come to some of the problems. Um, lots of these I got from the pre-class chat, so I, I thank everybody for um, helping me here. Uh, we'll look at some problems and then look at some solutions. Um, one thing I, I would say here, love alternative and news. Okay. Uh, <laughs> news directly from news channels or news websites, I would say it's too difficult for lower level students. When it is not graded, authentic news from Japanese radio, Japanese television, Japanese newspapers is too difficult for me. Um, exposing lower level students to real speed or real speed news, I don't think is helpful. Um, it's a motivation killer. So one thing I hope you, you will take away from today is try not to use real, real uh, native speaker speed news. Um, it has to be graded. You have to give students help. Um, for them to feel good about it and uh, to learn from it. Okay, so some of the problems. Um, news is too fast. Lots of people said this, most people said this um, in, in the past week in their comments to me. Um, natural news, of course, it's not graded. Um, it's often faster, actually, than normal speech because the newscaster, the newsreader, has a lot to say. Uh, yes, VOA news is um, slower. They don't use, I think they try and stay away from idioms. Uh, their special English news is slower and it's more suited for um, students, but still, I think, quite high. Pablo, you posted in the priest task. <laughs> Thank you. I can't remember what you said, but you probably said it was too fast. Uh, also, people who are interviewed in the news are often quite excited and they, they, they speak too fast too. So yes, news is too fast. But um, we can do things for that to not be a problem um, for students. Uh, the vocabulary and language. Um, so Tanita said in enthusiastic newscasters, <laughs> they speak too fast too, Dr. Nelly. Um, Tanita 
told me in the in last week sometime that there's lots of slang, idioms, phrasal verbs, formal words, um, words that are not relevant to the students' whole, students' own culture, uh, words on all kinds of weird and wonderful topic topics. Uh, and we need to, and we can help students with this. Um, students might not be interested. Um, this is true. A lot of students might not be interested in political news. Others might not be interested in sports news. Um, Safar, Safar, again, uh, said maybe students have no interest in what's going on around them. They might, um, Isabel said they might not have the level of in English, so they might become bored. I would say possible, but if you choose a, a good story, if you um, grade it correctly, properly, and choose the right activities, <coughs> um, you will have a lot of success. News is a story, and everybody loves stories. So once you introduce news as a story, um, I think you will have a good chance of success. Personally, I, I seriously cannot remember any occasions when students weren't that interested in what I was teaching. Uh, perhaps they, they were very good at hiding it, but most I've had very, 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 very positive experiences in uh, using current events and news in the classroom. Next problem is that the news could be um, too complex, not, not necessarily the language, but the actual topic. Um, I have a, <clears throat> a personal uh, experience of this. Last year or two years ago, I was doing my very, very best on the BBC to understand the news about a, a particular aspect of the global financial collapse. And they were talking about derivatives. They used diagrams. I think they did their best to use simple language. They were talking about swaps, credit default swaps, and I got totally lost. Uh, and, and my degree, my first degree, my bachelor's degree, was in accountancy. Um, so it was just too complex for me, and I switched off. Um, I didn't want to follow it anymore. So topics can be too complex. The solution is um, try to avoid them, don't use them. Um, Guadalupe said, cultural context is sometimes so different from the students' background. backgrounds. Guadalupe is a teacher who um, provided some comments to me last week. Um, yes, insufficient background knowledge. The students might not have the schemata to um, engage their interest or to help them with their understanding. Um, I stay away from politics in class, but students love it, Dr. Nelly. There you go. Students love politics. <laughs> um, I would say perhaps politics from their own country might be better than uh, international politics. Easy to lose the plot. Um, happens to me all of the time in Japanese. Uh, as a teacher, uh, it's important just to choose again your, 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 the topic, the story, it's a story. Choose the story carefully, um, help them with it, and hopefully that they, they will not lose the plot. Multiple, multiple accents. Um, I'm not, so this is what some um, teachers told me in, in the chat. Um, not necessarily sure that this is a, a great problem. Students need Practice. They need more exposure to multiple Englishes, so I think this is a, a teaching opportunity. Uh, finally, no script, difficult headlines, and noise. Okay. We'll look at solutions to some of these in a minute. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, Dr. Netlin, luckily I'll say, um, my class was postponed by 10 days, which gave me an amazing amount of time to uh, talk to different teachers and or for them to talk to me. Uh, it's busting in here. Busting. Good. Okay. Next section we're going to look at some solutions to help students with the news. Okay, solutions to things being too fast. Like my um Move forward button. Okay. 
Abdul. Yesterday or the day before, Abdul wrote to me and said, by constant practice, starting with special English news, with slow speech uh, um, to get them familiar with the language and to build confidence and progressively go to normal speech. Uh, Abdul, this is such a perfect uh, quote, such a perfect idea. Thank you. Uh, good luck with your news classes. I'm sure your students are very lucky to have you as a teacher. I love this comment. It kind of um, says a lot about what um, I want to, to say today. Constant practice. Get them to listen, listen, listen. Slow speed speech. Very, very important. You can build the, slowly build the speech um, up. Um, get them familiar with the language. Build their confidence. Confidence is very, very um, important. And progressively go to the normal speed speech. Okay. And there are lots of things you can do. Well, two things you can do to slow the text down. Um, use a sound editor like Audacity or GarageBand in, in Apple uh, to slow the speed down. Or if you record the news yourself, um, just speak more slowly. Um, put longer spaces to give the students extra processing time. Add some silence between the sentences. Um, I think the, the authenticity of the news is still there. It's just the students have a little longer to think about what they just heard and get ready for what's coming next. And um, if you can't add spaces, pause or um, ask the students to pause. Um, vocabulary. There are millions of activities, pre, while, post, uh, listening activities that you could do to help students with, um, with the news, re news listening. I'll, I'll look at some of those uh, shortly. Um, Safar again suggested um, giving the students some words from the text and asking them to uh, create the story from it. And then, of course, they can compare later. Um, if the students are not interested, um, I'm actually almost always amazed at, exact, at how, how interested students are in, are in the news. Um, they really, really respond well to it. They really want to learn with it. Japanese students, they, in my experience, they tend to like the world news more. Uh, my UAE students, they prefer local news or news of Arab culture or of Abu Dhabi more. So really find what you're interested in. Find what the students are interested in. Make them interested. Um, ask them what areas of news that they are interested in. Um, this goes a long way in the classroom. Students really appreciate you making a lesson for them on what, um, what, on what they want to learn about. Uh, how do you slow down YouTube videos? I'm not sure about YouTube videos. <laughs> um, I know about Audacity and, um, um, and GarageBand. A um, couple of years ago, I asked students what news topics they wanted. Some students asked me for news topics on camembert cheese, flamenco guitar, and the Apple iMac. So I found news stories for them. We did um, lessons on them, and they really, really appreciated um, me making lessons, and, and they put a lot of effort into their studies. So it really goes a long way if you ask them what they want. Um, Personalise the news. This is something that I've had um, a lot of success with. Get away from the news from newspapers or from websites and make news based around them. Record it, do some make some activities on it, take it into the classroom. Um, okay. uh, in the UAE, I made up a news story. It was called Teacher Nervous in First Class. And I wrote a news story about how nervous I was the first time I taught this particular class. And I mentioned every single student in this article by name. 
and they absolutely loved it. Um, they were, when I gave them the actual reading, they were all poring over it to see uh, why their name was mentioned and why their friend's name were mentioned. Um, so if you personalize the news, um, it, it adds an extra dimension of um, them wanting to be very, very involved in it. Um, school news. We all give students news about the school, what's happening in the school. Quite often, it's on um, a piece of A4 paper. And we give it to them, and quite often, that's the end of it. Record it. Record the school news. Play it to them. Give them pre, while, post listening activities. Um, it's real news, it affects them, so they'll probably um, engage with it more, and they'll um, probably remember it, remember what the news is more. It's, and it will also give them a, a purpose for listening, and it's authentic, it's real, authentic news. The same with teachers' news. We all come into class on a, a Monday or Sunday morning and give our news of the weekend or whatever. Record it. Rather than stand at the front of the class, make it into a learning activity. Um, and again, I think the students will love the difference and that they will love the fact that they can engage with your news and learn from it. Um, the same with their news. Um, I looked at um, Chuck Sandy's amazing class last week. Um, if you didn't see it, please look at Chuck Sandy's class on WizIQ, um, especially the part about using Audioboo, which is a, a site students can record and um, upload, and then other students can comment on. Um, I've given the link at the end of um, this presentation. Um, so yeah, get the students to record their news and share it with each other, and um, they really, really, really will kind of want to listen to it and interact. Um, exam news, again, the same with the school news. Turn exam news into a little activity. Um, guaranteed they will not forget the dates or when the exam is or what the exam is about. Okay. Um, class news is the same. Um, invent the headlines. Last one for personalizing the news is invent the headlines. Um, again, this is something that I have had a, an amazing amount of success with. I, I, I really, really um, love this. Um, here are some headlines that I uh, have used in my classes, and I've written them on pieces of A4 paper, stuck the paper around the classroom, and told students to get into groups. They each walk around, or well, they all walk around the class, and they take it in turns to be reporters, or to be um, at the scene, or to be the, the story. And they all talk about it, and uh, after they've walked around the class, they all come back, and they sit down in different groups, and they share and laugh about the different stories um, that they made up, or the different stories that they heard. Again, um, Audio Boo from um, Chuck Sandy's class, project class, <clears throat> or Voxopop, or Voice Thread. You can get students to um, record the news that they made, and then it becomes a lot more um, interactive once they start sharing it. Um, some solutions, oh, a, <laughs> a last minute solution to students not being interested is to wrap the news. Um, as I found out from this MOOC, uh, students, are, um, students and teachers now are very interested in um, rap. Rap the news is, I think, there'll be endless possibilities, endless fun. And it's like the teacher said in my earlier slide, who had a lot of success with uh, the lesson on hip hop. Um, so perhaps the way ahead is rap. So instead of news readers on the BBC, there could be um, news rappers. Um, I just heard somebody say they want me to do another rap, a news rap. Oops. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> this morning's or yesterday's news is um, China deploys rover on the moon. So 
a little wrap. Oops. China has deployed its lunar rover, and you know what that means, the space race ain't over. Right now it's on the surface of the moon, and for China scientists that's quite a boom. The name of the rover is the Jade Rabbit, and China's gonna make a habit of exploring space for mankind, just to see what they can find. What they'll find we must wait and see. This is the moon, this is the moon reporter from the BBC. <laughs> there you go, another lap. Okay, I've just been told that I've got five minutes. Uh, we're going to move forward a bit. Uh, Fakhruddin, practice makes perfect. The more they will listen, the easier for them to understand the general context. Make them listen, listen, and listen again. Um, it's very important, not just one listening. You can do many things to make them listen many, many times. And the final solution, <laughs> which I would say um, is breakingnewsenglish.com. I'm going to give you a very, very quick tour um, of breakingnewsenglish.com. As of this morning, 1,810 lessons on every topic you can think of. It happens every two days. I upload a new lesson every two days. There are seven levels. 120 words or 70 second listening in level zero. 250 words, two minutes in level six. Levels 3 and level 6 are bumper lessons. They have 26-page PDFs full of lots of activities. Uh, they all have five-speed listenings. Uh, the, the PDF has a 40-page handout. Sorry, a 40-activity handout. Uh, there's multi-speed scrolled listening, reading, sorry. So students can read at 200 words per minute, 300 words per minute and fire speed listening, as I said. Slower, the, the slowest level is 10% slower than slower. Slower is 10% slower than medium, and so on. And this slide will show you the difference between level zero, which is pretty much a post-elementary, or a high elementary, and level three, which is pre-intermediate. So you can move from the slowest to slower to medium to faster and fastest listenings. All in the same text, all done with audacity. There are 25 plus online activities, listening, reading, grammar, spelling, vocabulary, American English, British English. Uh, this is a, every single lesson has a 10 sentence dictation. You click the link, you hear the first sentence. You type in the words that you hear, the album was. You press check, and the, the words come up. They replace the stars. You go, ahead, you go again. They hear one music, so one music goes in, and so on. They listen and type the words that they hear until, at the end, you can get two 100%. Your score is 100%. Your score is 100%. Great feedback. Um, every lesson comes with spelling, and it's kind of in context because uh, there's some words before and after the spaces. They listen, and they type in what they hear. Uh, my spelling wasn't particularly good here. I got 66%. Every single lesson comes with 20, a 20 question MP3. Um, students might want to listen at home and answer at home. Uh, reassemble the text. This is something I absolutely love. Um, students love it too. Listen and uh, try to reassemble the text. Um, a, B or C. What does the article start with? <laughs> of course, C. So the students will press C. And there's your answer. And your score is 100%. What's next? Britain's Prime Minister, A, B, or C? Yes, very good, good Anna. Hey, <laughs> your score is 100%. What's next? Big, good, good, good. What's next? I heard A, are you sure? A, let's press A. Ah. Oops, so the, um, 
The exercise tells us that A is wrong. Let's go again. Yes, 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 B, 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 B. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, the score goes to 87%. Students want 100%. They will listen many, many times. They will hit their partner. Do this in pairs. They will hit their partner if their partner suggests the wrong answer. They want 100%. I have never had any students complain that if I say, listen again, listen three times. They all want to get 100%. Yes, it's great intrinsic motivation. Um, other activities, grammar closes. They type in the grammar and uh, check for their answer. They want 100%. They want 100% with articles. This is so easy. This is If you're worried about the level, do this activity. All they have to listen for is the, a, or an. It's great. And they want 100% with prepositions too. And sentence jumbles. Uh, I'm moving very quickly here. Um, hold, this is a gigantic dictation. Um, one student I, that keeps on writing to me absolutely loves these, piecing the whole thing back together. I'm not sure how many times she listens, but she, she absolutely loves this. You type in the words, and uh, all the correct words you have um, enters the, the little box here. Okay. Um, drop down menus. Let's see. Choose the correct word. If you look at the, the, the first example, they have to choose between recently and recent. It's a great opportunity to work with word, word endings. Is it an adverb or an adjective? What tense is it? Um, similar sounding words, similar looking words. They listen. They type in what they think the answer is. They listen again. And they check. And they won't actually press the check button until they're sure they have 100%. So um, they will listen quite a few times. Um, every lesson has a multiple choice quiz. I think 12 questions, 10 questions. Um, initials only, this, so they can listen. They've got the initial only of the, the, the words. They can use the online keyboard here, or their own keyboard, to, to um, reconstruct the text. Um, insert the spaces. They press return where the spaces are. Okay. Um, and then if you want to print out activities, there are 40 all skills activities. Uh, listening, I'm going to go very quickly here. Do, I do apologize. Um, fill in the gaps, comprehension questions, language close. Put the text back together, so a whole text jumble. Hello, did you like the drone delivery Amazon lesson? <laughs> it's an interesting idea. Sentence jumble, which also is also online. Choose the correct word, also online. Uh, put a slash where the spaces are, also online. This is a summary of my site. Um, lots of lessons every two days, from elementary to upper intermediate. Five speed listening. And so that's 20 listenings per lesson at all different speeds. British and North American English. Any North American volunteers, please help me <laughs> record. Uh, one of, uh, you, get to, you get the chance to stay with me in Japan. One teacher stayed with me in um, September. And I made her work. She made two, video, uh, two recordings while I was here. And she cut some rice when we were rice harvesting. Um, scrolled reading, 40 activity handout. Um, mini lessons, online activities, very interesting up-to-date topics, and uh, it's all free. Did I mention it's all free before? If not, then... Uh... Yes, Jace, Jace, come, we can wrap together in the rice fields. <laughs> uh, these are all of my websites. Um, if you're interested in how I started uh, um, Breaking News English, there are three blog, three blog posts that I did at the very bottom how it all started. The first blog post is called Life Savings, Right Ideas and Milk. That's how Breaking News English started. And these are some links. If you want to record news stories for your students, Vokaroo is very easy. That's it. The site comes up. You click to record. You speak and you get an MP3 which you can share on Facebook or Twitter or email for the students. Audioboo, check out Chuck Sandy's amazing um, class and learn all about Audioboo and lots of other things. He, he talked mainly about projects. 
and Audacity, which has uh, changed my life. <laughs> Learn Audacity, it's brilliant. Um, oh, talking to yourself in English. I, I uh, kind of skipped that. Great book. This for the discussion questions. Um, students can listen to the discussion questions and then talk to themselves. Um, if you're really, really interested in the lyrics of the, uh, the Breaking News English rap and the Jade Rabbit rap, there you are. And that's the last slide. Thank you all very much. Uh, Pablo, yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Dr. Nelly. Thank you, Pablo and Adrian. Wadana, thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. <clears throat> uh, I put an extra few minutes on there to make sure that if people have <laughs> questions, they have time to ask you. Yeah, I'm here. And yeah, and I, <laughs> when I saw those lyrics, I thought we got to go back, man. We got to go back and do the song. Let's do that. At oh. the, but let's do that at the absolute end. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta rock the hat also. Yeah. Um, but let's let's before <laughs> Dr. Nelly is actually a really big hip hop fan, uh, and and any, anyone that didn't think they were or was resisting at all. I think with how much it keeps coming back into these cl classes, if nothing else, people are getting used to it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Thank before you. we do that, before we do that, uh, Sean has a very interesting career and in what he's done. Uh, some questions were flying by earlier. I didn't catch them. So if you have a question right now, yeah, I saw that about Pablo. He he was he, he went to your site and uh, and got into it and then realized put two and two together that uh, you actually, <laughs> it's actually your site. <laughs> uh, it's, which it's, which it's, site, Pablo? <laughs> Breaking News English, I think. Okay, thank you, Gordano, again. Uh, like I said at the beginning, before Shawnee Sean touched down here, uh, many many teachers I know have gone on his sites and not realized they were there. You know, like uh, so that that's he he maintains this low profile while he's working so hard on all this stuff, and I I want him to stay that way. But I think what he said earlier, he doesn't get a chance to really connect with teachers that much. I think there's a very uh, important opportunity uh, in webinars and online to be able to to do that and also to, to take questions that people have about how they might use it uh, with their students. And, and that way we can also get his stuff out there even more than it's already out there, but to get it into, more, get it into more classes and more teachers. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Do you have a day job someone wants to ask? Are you just working for Google, Google AdSense now, or are you actually doing something else? <laughs> okay. For, for the, se the second time in my life, I've, I'm taking a, a year's break. Uh, the first time was 10 years ago when I started Breaking News English, and I, I thought it would make me uh, incredibly rich. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, it, and it didn't, and I went bankrupt. <laughs> and I had to sell my house for a huge loss, and I had to leave uh, Japan, which broke my heart. Uh, wow. So 10 years later, um, I'm taking another risk, and I don't have to sell, out, sell my house again and leave Japan. Interesting. Very interesting to compare now and ten years ago. And I think I think this may be it as far as getting into new media uh, with language teaching and learning. So um, hang in there. That's what I got to say. Any other questions yeah. for the man, the master, Shawnee Sean? <laughs> no. There's a few people typing. Let's yeah. use the oh, site. Use it. <laughs> yeah. where, where, use are it. You in, where are you in Japan, Sean? Um, I'm about 200 kilometers north of Kobe. Okay, if you know Kobe on the, on the Japan on the Japan seaside, which means it's a uh, very snowy. We get about three months of snow, so wow. lo lots of shoveling every morning. <laughs> ah, daily routine. Ah, get up. At, I get up at uh, 4:30 every morning. Start uh, finding some news. Um, spend hmm, spend about half my day on my sites, and the other half uh, swimming, cycling, uh, playing with my daughter, my baby daughter, gardening, growing rice, <laughs> growing tomatoes. <laughs> very good, very good. Athlon, no, no I, I swim and I uh, cycle, but I had a motorbike accident uh, about. 13 years ago, so I can no longer run, I'm afraid. 
Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. The getting up at 4.30 in the morning is something um, I hear so many. Oops, one second. It's asking me for the time again. Let me just give us another five minutes in case we in case we need it so we don't get cut off. Um, it's funny. I, 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 go to bed, I go to bed very early too, so uh, I prefer to go to bed early and get up early when everything's quiet. It's, it's a lovely time to be really productive very early in the morning when it's very quiet. I meet so many English language teacher creators uh, who do that. And uh, I, I, I either do that or I go to sleep really late. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> Uh, I got a message saying the incoming. Oh, I stopped working. That's fine. Sorry, sorry, it doesn't affect me. No, I just, I just gave us more time. I just gave us more the time. The sun sets around uh, five o'clock at the moment, Nelly, Doctor Nelly. But uh, in the summer, eight thirty. Thank you, Vanessa. So, do you want to? Uh, should we do the song? You have the lyrics up there, which is very cool. Uh, <laughs> so, if you go back to that. Do, do we do we read the lyrics up there? Yes, so well, people can read along. Yeah. Okay. Come on. <laughs> you're you're asking us this. You just gave an amazing <laughs> presentation. You're one of the you're one of the pioneers in, in helping <laughs> students. <laughs> not, yeah. not, not with rap, not with rap though, James. Not with rap. <laughs> okay. There you go. Well, Is that have, have... Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we got we got to <laughs> give him a little help here. We got to give him a little help. Um, what, what's, what's the speed you like? Is it like, let me hear a little bit of it, then I'm going to give you a beat. Uh, you, you, uh, you, you go, I'll follow. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a little slower, like, hello folks from all over the place. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. <laughs> hello folks from all over the place. Hi to Sylvia, Nelly, and Jace. You may know my name, but just in case, this is Shawnee Sean from Cyberspace, doing a class for WizIQ, coming from Japan, to talk to you. My class is called Listening to the News. I hope to hear your thoughts and views on how to teach using current events and how to motivate students. I look at why news is a must and show you my site, a site you can trust. There's discussion and spelling and dictation and online quizzes for education. There are easy to use activities in seven levels for you to use with ease. We'll look at news and many a thing like multi-level speed reading and spelling and writing and of course speaking. But the number one aim is listening. I'm so glad you came. You can say that you heard Breaking News English with the word. The word. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's Shawnee Sean from Japan in the house. In the Thank you. House. Yeah. Accompanied by uh, MC Fluency. Uh, Fluency MC. Fluency MC, sorry. <laughs> Fluency but, uh, MC. Yeah, but I like, I'm actually, I'm, I'm originally a DJ and a drummer and a beatboxer, so I haven't, I haven't okay. beatboxed in a long time, so I was a little off and we hadn't rehearsed, but you know. We did our thing. We've got time when you come to Japan. That's right. We'll be in the rice fields. Yeah. The rice field rap. That's right. The hip hop, hip hop in the rice fields. That that sounds like, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds like a plan. We got it. We got to take. We got to do it, man. We got to do it. Yeah. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for coming. We've extended the time a few times. I think we'll end end on this high note. Uh, great to have everyone here. Please do me a favor uh, before we say goodbye uh, to, to Sean. I want to just make sure everybody checks out a video I just put in our courseware. It's end of the course announcements video. I put it there. I also sent uh, a notification to everyone. It's a YouTube video. Talks about the post-class task. I just did it a few hours ago. I'm wearing these same clothes in the video. Uh, check it out. Um, we have a few more classes coming up. I'm going to schedule for this last week. There's, uh, you got to watch it because it talks about uh, the due date for uh, the post-class tasks and some other important information. So please check out that video. Uh, class from Sylvia I'm going to schedule. Uh, another class that I may do, maybe, and a class where we're going to have a tag team thing with lots of presenters at once. A 90-minute or two-hour class uh, focused on video. That's going to be very exciting. So I'm going to be scheduling those the next couple of days. Mr.
Mr. Sean Bonneville, the master, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Jace. <laughs> so much, so much respect for everything you've done, and and had a feeling that you know you take all of that, and put it in the course feed, and get communicating with all the teachers, and be able to really help them out. And that's that's an exciting thing. I'm glad you're involved in it, and uh, hope to be more involved with you in the future. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Jace. Right. Thanks, take everybody. Care. Thank you. Bye, Good everybody. Night, Thank you. <laughs> you just touched on the lake, you too. <laughs> Much respect, ELTT techniques. Peace. Good night. Good night.